Welcome to All Nations Full Gospel Church. We're glad you could join us today. We know God has a plan and purpose for your life right here as you join our worship experience. We are a spiritual family where everyone is loved and accepted. It is our passion to train and raise leaders for the body of Christ to help them discover their God given talents and abilities. We are a house of prayer for all nations of the earth, and together we believe that the good news of Jesus Christ must be shared all over the world. We invite you to partner with us, and on behalf of our global church family, we welcome you to All Nations Full Gospel Church. is one over you is release uh, release from sickness release from disease uh, release from poverty release from every form of bondage from every form uh, of demonic entanglement uh, the devil is a liar our uh, weapons for the warfare are not carnal uh, they are mighty through God uh, to the pulling down of strongholds uh, Full Gospel Church presents the Leaders Retreat. Join us in Toronto, Canada with our global senior pastors and founders, Dr. Samuel and Dr. Rose Doncor. Occupancy rates are as follows. Act fast and don't delay. Register today at a local branch office or register online at www.anfgc.org. For more information, call our event hotline at 
Well, hello and welcome to All Nations Full Gospel Church. We're glad you could join us today. And we know God is ready to impart something special as we gather together as a church family. Now, before we begin our service, let's take a look at some important information and upcoming events right here at our church. God has promised us that this is our year of release. So join us for the 2023 Leaders Retreat happening March 3rd to the 6th at the Toronto North Sheraton Parkway Hotel. We're believing God for a mighty move of His Spirit as we gather from across the nations for the release of the supernatural. This year's Leaders Retreat will be our regular three-day in-person retreat with occupancy rates as follows. Single occupancy, $460. Double, $325. Triple, $280. Quad, $260. $260. Register today with your smartphone by texting the word ANFGC to 77977 and tap the link in the response and select the payment tab, Leaders Retreat. You can also register with your local branch office or online at anfgc.org. Join us on Monday, February 6th for our global leadership training. Our senior pastor will be ministering across our denominational family and you can't afford to miss this wonderful time of insight and revelation online at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We invite you to our Bible experience tour of Egypt and Israel happening in 2024. Dates and itinerary will soon be confirmed. However, we strongly encourage you to secure your interest with a deposit as space is filling up quickly. Simply contact the church office or call us with the number on your screen. Join us for daily prayer, 6 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. You can connect with God in a deeper way and grow in intimacy and relationship with our Heavenly Father. We'll see you online for our daily hour of prayer. And now let's take a quick look at what we've got coming up in the coming months. Once again, thank you for joining us here at All Nations Full Gospel Church. If you've missed any information or if you want to get connected, call the church office with the number on your screen. And on behalf of our senior pastors, Drs. Samuel and Rose Doncourt, we love you. Now let's head back to the rest of the service. To serve him without fear. We don't have to serve him in fear, we serve without fear. So let us serve lovingly without begrudging it. Serve God without grudge in 2023. Learn to serve God without grudge, without resentment, without bitterness, without envy. For we honor God through loving service, through giving. And through obedience, these are some of the ways we honor God. As chosen people of God, through whom Jesus is building his church on earth, on planet earth, and his kingdom, we need to learn how to serve him without fear. We just have to learn how to serve God without fear. Shall we look at the passage before us again? But um, we will look at it and come back to it. But first, honor God through loving service. Say to your neighbor, love God or honor God through loving service. Hallelujah. So it's important that we learn to honor God through loving service. We have to learn to honor him. If you look at Malachi 1.6, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? The old King James would say, where is my fear? It is important we allow this passage to speak to our hearts. A son honors his father. A servant honors his master. And then he says, if I'm a father to you, remember God was not necessarily a father to Israel. 
I said it yesterday. They got so upset that Jesus, a man, will call God Father. As far as they were concerned, God was a master, a great, awesome, and in a way, awful God. That they always come into his presence with trepidation. They were scared. But through the blood of Jesus, you see, when Jesus came and started introducing God as Father, they couldn't take it. They were so upset to the point that they killed him for that. You being a man, you call God your Father. You remember that a son honors his father. We are sons and daughters of God. So it is our privilege to honor God the Father. A servant honors his master. But I said it and I have to repeat it. You see, if I am a father, where is my honor? And if I'm a master to you, where is my fear? A, a servant serves with trepidation. A servant serves with fear. But a son serves his father with loving service. That's how a son or a child of God honors God. The way you and I honor God is through loving service. While the servant serves his master with fear and trembling, the son, on the other hand, does so with love and honor. You respect him, you honor him, but not with fear. For a child, there is no greater way to show honor to a father than to serve him. And this is something many of us miss. We miss it because it's not been taught often, even in the church. We don't understand that service, serving God, is the key to honoring him. Serving your father is the key to honoring him. Serving your Lord is the key to honoring him. Once again, for a child, there's no greater way to show honor to a father than to serve him. That's a biblical pattern. Let's take a few examples from the Bible. And I purposely started with a woman. Let's look at Genesis 29, verses 5, 6, and then we jump to, to 9. 5. Then he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know him, six. So he said to them, is he well? And they said, he is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Now while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Do you know that this girl was young? This girl was not even married and sent away from her father's home. But she was honoring the father with loving service. She became a shepherdess because the father was a shepherd. And because the father didn't have sons, she stepped in and she became a shepherdess. And the story is about Jacob, who has been sent away by his father and mother to their uncle Laban. And he made that long and treacherous journey. And when he got to the presence of the city, or the city limits, he, he, he came to the well. And there he met some people and he asked them, do you know 
of one Laban, the son of Nahor or Nahor, and they say, we know him. And he asks, is it well with him? He says, sure, he's doing well. Even his daughter is coming with the sheep. Think of it. There is nothing a woman cannot do. There's a lot that women can do, but sometimes we say, this is a man's job, this is a woman's job. But because the father did not have any sons at that time, his daughters, or in this case, Rachel, the daughter, became the father's shepherdess. And so she was taking care of the father's sheep. And of course, Jacob was so happy. He had prayed. He didn't know where he was going. It's not like today that you visit often. Those days, it was, if, I, most of it were long distances. And crossing many countries to get to Haran, where Laban was. And, and so he was so happy, he was so thankful to God. Held there and kissed there, and then, of course, helped her with the, the sheep. So Rachel honored her father by serving him. And, and so she went home with Jacob. And Laban was so happy because Laban was there when Eliezer came at the behest of, of um, Abraham to ask the hand of his sister, Rebekah, in marriage for Isaac. And now to see his nephew, he was so blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and so he became, he took him as his child. And in verse 15, he opens up a beautiful conversation. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what should your wages be? Do you know that he had run from his brother Esau, who was intent, who was bent on killing him because he had taken the blessing from him, the blessing that his father wanted to bestow on Esau became Jacob's. And so the brother was upset and he said, when my father dies, I'm going to kill him. And the word came to um, the mother's ears and she pleaded with the, 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 the husband to send him away. And he has come to be with his uncle. So his uncle has become his abducted father for now. And he's seven. So he was seven diligently. He was serving him lovingly. Do you know that many of us don't know how to serve? We think that service or seven is for sevens, particularly in certain cultures. People don't want to serve. They think that the housemaid must serve, the houseboy must serve. They don't understand that service is a way, must be a way of life. Something for you, something for me. Something that we should do with all of our heart and with all of our mind. And so he says, don't serve me for nothing. I want to bless you in, in return. So Jacob's children honored their father also by serving him. Do you know that God blessed him. He had many sons. If you look at Genesis 37, 12 to 14, then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. You see, the, 
Jacob had lots of flocks and all his sons took after him. All his sons, they served their father by taking care of their father's flocks. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. So he left and chased after his brothers. Those days, no GPS. You couldn't test. There were no maps. So he was asking along the way. And, and if people come with a large head of flocks, it is very easy to recognize them and to remember, oh, I saw them here. Because Jacob was blessed with multitudes of flocks. We're talking about thousands of them. And so they had to go from place to place searching for for um, uh, a place to graze these animals. And so he finds them. This is just the point to let you know that Jacob's sons honored their father through loving service. And this is the biblical pattern. These days, even some children don't serve their fathers. The, the father can be ironing and they will be standing by and chatting with him, Jack, how are you? No, your father is not Jack, he's your father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then, I have hinted that it's a biblical pattern. Do you know that even in ministry, that was what God Almighty did. In ministry, he did not set up the ministry of Aaron. He set up the ministry of Aaron and his sons. And if you look at Exodus 28, verse 1. Now take Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister to me as priest, Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Itamar. And so you notice that is a biblical pattern that the sons will serve their father and serve along with him even in ministry. In ministry, you're supposed to serve along with your father. And, and this is God's principle. And that principle is that we honor our fathers by serving them. It could be in ministry. It could be in any business that your father may have. It is amazing that apart from what we just read and the scripture before us, it used to be like that, particularly in the United Kingdom, where companies were registered along those lines. Example, J.B. Ollivant and Sons, P.Z. and Sons, This and Sons, That and Sons. That was how companies were registered, because children serve their parents. They honor their parents by serving them. So if your father owns a store, as you grow up, you pick up and you help your father, you serve. And way back, it used to be like that, even among doctors, among uh, accountants, all the professionals, all the professions rather, that was what they did. The, their sons will be with them. If you are a tailor, you will teach your kids tailoring. 
Do you know that because Joseph was a carpenter, Jesus also became a carpenter? That is how God has ordained it. These days, we think that what our fathers may be doing is beneath us. We don't even want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. But it's a principle that God has established. Do you know that while, while David's brothers were dining with the prophet, because the prophet had come to town, the prophet purposely went to Bethlehem to visit Jesse in order to fetch one of his sons to replace Saul. And all, the, all his brothers were happy. They were with the prophet. And I believe that everyone was praying in their heart, let it be me, let it be me, let it be me. While they were dining and whining with the prophet, David was, on the other hand, busy honoring his father by taking care of his flocks. Let's look at 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. God said, Go. To Bethlehem. I know you've been mourning, you've been crying, you've been all over your, your, um, your friend. Because remember, it was Samuel who was judging Israel. He was the leader, and the people came to him and said, We're not so, We are not happy with the way your children are behaving. They, are, they don't walk in integrity like you do. Therefore, appoint a king who will rule over us. And he wasn't happy because he knew Israel was making a mistake. God was their king. But because one of his sons, Samuel was a perfect man, he was a good man, but his sons were of a different character. They were not faithful. They were not honest. They were taking bribes and doing all kinds of wicked things. So the people loved them and said, we don't want them to take over when you are no longer with us. So make a king for us. And, and because of the series of events in the life of, of Saul, he was rejected by God after he's been anointed by the prophet Samuel. He got rejected. And, and Samuel prayed and mourned and fasted over Saul. And that story tells us, God said to me, why are you mourning? Why are you crying? Knowing I will not change my mind concerning Saul. Rather get up. Wipe your tears, and go to Bethlehem. I'm sending you to a particular house, and that is the house of Jesse. And he has sons. One of them have been chosen by me to replace Saul. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And sure enough, he would have killed him. He would kill him because... He had become a maniac. You find that a lot in certain countries and certain cultures. Not only will anybody who threaten uh, to take over the presidency will be killed. Sometimes they will kill you and kill everybody you know. But, and so Saul had become a maniac like that. And uh, and Samuel told God that if Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. And so this is not a lie. 
he went there first and foremost to offer sacrifice and to worship and to bring the people, the leadership there. And once again, because he was the judge, he was a prophet to bring them the word of the Lord. And then in the midst of that, take advantage of the opportunity to bless and appoint the one God has chosen. Verse 3. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I'll show you what you should do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. It is one of the things we do in working with God. You learn to obey. You will not get the entire picture. You will not know the end from the beginning. It is only God who knows the end from the beginning. But when you take obedient steps, always willing to do what he has asked you to do, it is then that you come to a large place. You look back and say, is it me? Is it I? Did God accomplish all these great things through me? Yes. All it takes is obedience. So he, uh, let's look at verse 4. What did he do? So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And this is one of the most remarkable things about the life of Samuel. The man walked with God so much that his presence evoked so much consternation and fear. Why has he come? Is he bringing a, a peaceful word? Or is he coming to rebuke us and to correct us? And so the elders of the city, so you notice that he did not just go to the house of Jesse in a corner to just anoint Samuel, but he went to the elders and there was, just as God in, instructed him, there was a feast with the elders and Jesse and his sons were also invited. Verse 5. And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And so everybody got consecrated, set apart. You just stop any evil thing you doing in order to make yourself ready for God to use and so or for you to fellowship with the prophet remember that in those days only the king carried an anointing of God and the prophet and the priest and so every time the prophet or the priest or the king interacts with you you they bring in the very presence of God Almighty. Six. So it was when they came, when they came, that he looked, he looked and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. And, uh, and guess what? He, Eliab, the firstborn, looked exactly like Saul. And so being human, he said, this is it. And look at verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I've refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And, and in, I remember a few years back, one individual came to me to say, 
I mean, he came to me several times that he wanted to be in the ministry here in Africa. And uh, I didn't think he had the, okay, what will make him successful? I didn't think he had it. But then he kept coming. He kept pressuring. And so I said, go. And I took him to a small town where the church had been decimated by the previous pastor. And this man went there, rebuilt the church, and has built a beautiful church building. I still talk about it. You see, we are human. We look at people. We look at their stature. We look at how they dress, how they put themselves together. And I've seen the, the zeal of that guy. Every time he comes around and I'm doing a program, he won't miss it. He will come and pray. And uh, because he doesn't want to fall asleep, he will pray bouncing uh, like a ball. And so that he stays alert and keen. So we are all human. We look at appearances. We look at physical stature. And this is the reason so many people miss good men, particularly ladies. I don't like this person, he's too short. I don't like this person, he's too tall. I don't like this person because of this. When that person may be a dynamite, but more importantly, a jewel. It's amazing what God does. Do you know that you can, you can miss the right person for you just because you focus on physical stature, on appearances? Many women, and sometimes the people they pick are the very people who will mess their lives and make them miserable and treat them like, like they are not human beings. But because of the way they, they uh, conduct themselves and the, their hairstyle and the kind of borrowed shoes they wear to see you and even the watch, sometimes they, they have on their hand are borrowed. You know, they may borrow the watch in order to make an appearance to you because man looks on the outward. Verse 8, so Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Nine. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Ten. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. I think that at this point in time, the prophet who has never missed God, God loved Samuel so much that he did not allow any of his words to drop to the ground. In other words, there was not one false prophecy. And now, for the first time, he's about to be embarrassed. He has said to this man that God has sent me to your house to anoint one of your sons. And seven sons have passed before him. And God said, no, 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 no. So let's look at verse 11. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. Do you know that if you recall, if you're paying attention closely, for them to be part of that feast, he consecrated them. Do you know that David was not consecrated? He was not invited. 
But David was doing something that is dear to the heart of God. He was honoring his father through service. Serving, he was with the sheep. Whereas the others were in their tire. They were in their ties with the prophet. Consecrated. But God did not set any one of them apart. And the father says, there he is. He's the youngest. I have sent him to the bush. He's taking care of the, of the sheep. And someone said to Jesse, send them, bring him. For we'll not sit down till he comes here. And that's one of my, my, my style. Uh, so many of you pastors probably don't know me. I'm so focused. You know, remember what he says? We are not sitting down until he comes, regardless of the distance. In those days, you couldn't test. You couldn't uh, FaceTime. You have to physically send someone. And he said, we are not sitting down. He must come. He must come here. I got to see him because I'm a man with a mission. I'm a man of a mission, and I'm a man on a mission. So I'm not going to sit down, and none of you will sit down unless we get the job done. Many a time, people will just leave the job undone and go home and sleep and give you all kinds of excuses. I couldn't do it because of this. I couldn't do it because it rained. I couldn't do it because the deacons won't come. The pastors won't come. This won't come. No. If you're given a mission, you do it. Regardless of the one who comes along with you or those who don't come along with you. Verse 12. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Verse 13. Again, I want you to know that he wasn't consecrated. But there's something about service that many of us miss. Service to God. That will always cause you to tap into the anointing. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Job done. So he went back. But you notice when he came in, God did not say he wasn't consecrated. And he received a full outpouring of the horn of oil on him in the midst of his brothers. 14. Oh, thank you. Many sit in church. They don't serve but expect God to anoint them for ministry. It doesn't work like that, hon. If you want God to use you, then you got to serve. And there is nothing in God's house that you cannot or shouldn't do. Many a time we think, oh, I want to be a pastor, so if the pastor will let me preach, No, you can usher, you can clean the church, you can play music, you can support, you can pray, you can be a cell leader, you can go out there and witness and bring people to church, but you serve. David was seven, while the others were consecrated and praying and fasting. When we were young, we all wanted God to use us. We were desirous of the ministry. And so you know what we did? We fasted and fasted and fasted and fasted and fasted. I'm not talking about one time. It became our lifestyle. When I first went to Canada, I couldn't eat half of a chicken leg because I had fasted until 
just a piece of uh, anything like this will fill me up. But we still miss God's plan, God's perfect will. We miss it because nobody taught us. One of the easiest ways to attract the anointing is through service. So don't sit in church and do nothing, particularly in the year of release. He has visited us to release us from the hands of all those who hate us so we can serve him without fear. So learn to serve. Learn to be part of a ministry in the church. And it doesn't matter. You could be, you could be in the bush. As long as you're serving, when the time for promotion comes, they will fetch you from where you are. It's not always being in front. Because many of us, we want to be in front. That's the only way we will serve. We don't want to serve behind the scenes. If people will not see us, we don't want to do it. David was not around. He was in the bush, in the field. But because he was serving, God called him. In 2 Samuel 2, 9 to 15, sorry, 2 Kings, sorry. So it was, when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elijah, ask, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened. As they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he, had, he, he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that way. And Elijah and Elisha crossed over. And now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. This is another interesting, insightful Bible passage. Um, Elijah had a servant, an assistant by name Elisha. And Elisha served him faithfully. He served, Elisha served Elijah faithfully. And until the very day he was about to be taken out. Have you noticed that sometimes we start very well? We start so well, but we don't end well. Do you know that this man was faithful? He was close to him. He continued to serve him. When the Lord revealed to him that the time for Elisha to be taken away was near, uh, he even got closer. Elijah tried to shake him off. You stay here. I'm going to the main campus. You stay at the city campus. You stay here. I'm going to the farm. You stay here. I'm going to Accra. You stay here, I'm going to the mountain. He did not. He, he said, I will go. 
I'll go with you. I, I need to serve you. And he kept closely. And every town they would get to, the, the sons of the prophets would say to him, do you know that God is about to take your master from him? He said, shh, shh, keep quiet. Keep quiet, I know. And so they were going and they were talking. And all of a sudden, he turned to him and said, before the, the Lord takes me away, what should I do for you? He said, I want a double portion of the anointing that is upon your life. He said, what you've asked is hard. It's not in my power to grant it. Only God can grant it to you. But here is the key. If when I'm parted, you can see it, then it will happen. If not, you should have asked for a few dollars, which most preachers today will ask. Give me money instead of give me the anointing. Give me what will cost me to have money. No, they want money. And if you don't give it to them, they label you as mean and wicked, as somebody who has no feeling, as somebody who does not care. Because they focus so much on money, they are not interested in learning the principles that will give them money. And so they were going. Then all of a sudden, guess what? There was a chariot of fire. There was this fire coming down and separated them. And his, his boss, his father, you see, it's interesting. He was his master. He was his boss. But he served him as he would serve his father. And so if you look at verse 9, is it um, 9 or 12 or something like that? Yes, and Elijah saw it, and he cried out, my father, my father, not my boss, my boss. Oh, Reverend, Reverend. No, he said, my father. See, there's something, you see, you can, we honor our fathers with love and service. You, we honor our masters with fearful service. We, we serve, but in fear. That means it's not coming from our hearts. But if you see someone as a father, you serve differently. You serve with all of your heart. He's your father. You love him. You appreciate him. It, nothing that he does will irritate you in terms of, oh, it's too much. You have no idea how we haven't slept for days. And after this, we are going to the farm. After this, we are going here. And then you complain and you tell everybody. That is what a servant does. But a son is happy to be with his father, work with his father. So that was how he cried out, my father, my father, that shows his heart towards his boss, Elijah. Physically, they were not like related. They were just related in the spirit and he took him as a father. So he honored Elijah by serving him as a son who will serve his father. Then in 2 Kings 3, 11 and 12, but Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Again, such a beautiful insight. You notice how they described Elisha? Elisha as the one who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Many a time when God touches our heart, and we find a man of God 
to whom we serve uh, and with whom we serve, people will start saying all sorts of things. Uh, you are being abused, you are being misused, he's too uncaring, and this and this. And we allow these things to get into our spirit. And when that gets into our spirit, guess what? Then we become disloyal. We are no longer committed. We are no longer happy to serve. But if you keep your heart pure and you plug your ears, some, as soon as God starts using you mightily in the denomination, people will come to you, you are doing this for someone. Why don't you start your own ministry? You are not doing it for some donko. You're not doing it for any man. And that is the mistake all of us make. The ministry is not for a man. The ministry is for God. And in a moment we come to that important point that many miss. And but we listen to these things and, oh, you are from uh, this country and he's from that country and you are killing yourself. It is only through you that the ministry is striving. Through you the ministry is, 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 is um, you know, recognized because of the unction upon you. You should be doing your own ministry. Every time I listen to particularly African preachers, I cry because oh, um, most of the things they say, you got to be your own uh, employer. Don't, you don't have to work for anybody. As if working for people is a curse. All the teachings of Jesus concerning faithfulness and loyalty and integrity has to do with serving someone. But you hear African preachers, you got to, uh, you, you got to be on your own. And so we develop on unfaithful attitude is the reason so many ministries crash. They don't go far. So many businesses crash. Why? Because while he was serving someone, he was stealing his money to establish his own. He's stealing his money to establish his own. Because we go to churches, everything is the devil. We don't do anything wrong. They don't teach us God's word. So we are not faithful. We are not honest. So see how they described Elisha, the one who poured water on the hand of Elijah. And that was his qualification. And that was what convinced Jehoshaphat, who knew God better than the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And he said, if he served Elijah, until Elijah was taken away, then the word of the Lord is with him. We can, yes, the word of the Lord is with them. So let's go. He would not misguide us. You need to understand that God honors those who serve him more than those who don't. Do you know that a lot of people don't know this? A lot of pastors don't know this. A lot of deacons don't know this. A lot of leaders in the church don't know this. God honors those who serve him more than those who don't. Let's look at Malachi 3, 16 to 18. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern 
between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Back to 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before God for those who feared the Lord and who meditate on his name. There is a book of remembrance in which certain individuals are listed. Their names are written in that book of remembrance. And particularly those who serve and those who give. Those who serve and those who give. And but many of us don't know that. It's the reason we grumble when we serve. Oh, it's costing me too much money to go to church every day. It's costing me too much money to do this. Because we've forgotten that there is a book of remembrance that has your name in it. That means you cannot go down. God will provide and God will bless. In Hebrews 6.10, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and continue to minister. So you notice the book of remembrance. Those that have their names written include those who work. See, it is impossible for God to forget your labor of love. It's not possible. That will make God unjust. That will make God unrighteous. And the Bible says God is not unjust to forget. That means if he forgets your labor of love, it will make God unrighteous. It will make him unjust. That means God will not be fair. God will not be impartial. So you notice that the Bible says God will not forget your labor of love. And so how does he remind himself of you? How does he remind himself about you? That is where the book of remembrance comes in. There is a book of remembrance for those who serve. It doesn't matter what it is. The mistake many of us make is that we think we have to serve only in the limelight. But as long as you're serving, if nobody sees you, nobody hears of you, nobody knows, but God sees what you're doing and God knows what you're doing, because he has written your name in the book of remembrance, so he does not forget you. Because if he forgets you, he will become unjust. He will become unrighteous. And God is not unjust. So he will never forget you. Because he sees what you are doing. And he knows what you are doing. The sacrifices toward his name. So know this. It is impossible for God to forget your labor of love. That would make God unrighteous. But because he is righteous... He has provided for himself a book of remembrance to reward those who serve him. That is why we have the book of remembrance. And so that from time to time, God goes over the list and says, ah, this guy, he has been doing this for the past 10 years. Everybody is laughing at him. Why are you wasting all your money? And God comes in and blesses him. And then you get jealous. Have you ever been jealous by others before? But probably you haven't. Their eyes will go three times like this. It will just expand like this. 
looking at you. That means they are jealous. Because of the blessings of God, the promotion that God has blessed you with. If you look at Malachi 3.17, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. You notice he does not say, as a man spares his son. He says, as a man spares his son who serves him. God says he will make us his jewels, those who serve him. Many, many of us are missing the blessings of God because we don't serve. We sit in church and we criticize. We, we sit in church and we find fault. Instead of taking the broom and sweeping the place, if the place is dirty, instead of taking the brush and, and brushing the place, no, uh, look at them, and look at this, look at that. Nobody sings well here. And yet you have a golden voice. Why don't you? You can even take voice training and sing. See, many of us are clueless about the benefits of, of seven. The benefit of service. Loving God. You see, the child who serves his father walks in privileges and favor that other siblings don't know. God says, I will make him my jewel. I don't know. Due to lack of teachings, a lot of preachers and people serving the Lord are still afraid of the devil and afraid of witches and wizards. I don't pray about witches and wizards because they can touch me. The reason is that God has made me his jewel. And he, you see, we walk in certain privileges. I remember during the COVID, we were praying every day, morning and evening. I wasn't masking. And, uh, and uh, some people say, oh, God, strike him to teach him a lesson. He's not being scientific. He's being idiotic. I'm still here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right? And, and you see, God, because they have no clue, no idea. I used to say to God, I'm praying for those who are sick. If I get sick, who is going to pray for them? And I knew that on account of what I was doing, I was walking in divine protection. And some people were mad. He doesn't obey the, the rules. He doesn't obey public health rules. And, and then they, they got mad. But I have a secret, and today I'm revealing some to you. You see, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them. As a man spares his own son who serves him. You see, if you serve your father through loving service, he, there is nothing he won't do for you. He will spare you even if you make a mistake. He won't chop off your head. He will treat you with, he will even hit you with gloves of love. He will pamper you. He will protect you. A lot of people don't know that. They think serving God, oh, I'm too busy. But you not be too busy to get sick. You not be too busy to have serious challenges that you can't you know, fix. Let's look at Romans 14 and verse 4. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. This is also another loving passage for me because when you serve, you are a servant. And when you serve God, 
People will judge you. People will criticize you. Some will even want you to fall. But the Bible says, because you are doing this for God, he himself will keep you. He will make you stand. So you can wish me to get sick or this and that. No. God is able to make me stand. He is able to make me stand. He is able to make you stand as you serve him. And so know the secrets, the blessings that accrue to us for serving the Lord. It's so important you get that straight. So, so important. God truly loves his servants. He is able to keep them or make them stand regardless of the circumstances. Back to Malachi 3.18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve God. Can you imagine for a minute what the scripture is saying here? The one who serves God is righteous. The one who does not serve God is unrighteous and wicked. And God makes a distinction. I've seen this, having pastored for 40 years and counting. Do you know that some love God? Nothing comes before God. And sometimes people will say, you are foolish, you are wicked, you are this, you are that. But God makes a distinction of them. He, he blesses them. He, he really uh, honors them and those who are wise. I got to take my kid here. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. Sooner or later, oh, please pray for my kid. My kid is this. My kid is that. In their upbringing, they forgot to make God the central of this thing. It's so important that God makes a distinction between one who serves him and one who does not serve him. Many of us think that, oh, if I like, I do it. If you can't force me, we don't intend to force anyone. It's the reason in our year of release, the time God has released us and saved us from all our enemies, blessing us and giving us breakthroughs, this is the year we must serve God lovingly. But I'm showing you the benefits and the blessings because God makes a distinction between those who love him and serve him and those who love him but don't serve him. So the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Serve him without people having to beg you. Serve him without people having to beg you, please come and play. Please come and sing. Please come and dance. Please come and usher. Please come and PPA. Please come and deacon. No. Please come and pastor. Do you know some pastors even forget? We call for prayer. And we pray in every evening. And they won't be there. God makes a distinction between those who serve him and those who don't serve him. And I believe with all of my heart, as we call a Mama Rose to come, let us pray and, and uh, ask God Almighty to help us. So as leaders, let's all rise and uh, begin to pray, begin to tell the Lord, Lord, have mercy 
I miss it. I have done wrong. I have not loved you enough to save you. Everything else has been put before you, but I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Shall we pray? Lift up your voice this day. The word has come to change our lives. The word has come to straighten us up. The word has come to make us right with God. We've not done what the Lord wants us to do. Let's go before the Lord and ask him for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, we have come because of your son. Father, our sins are before us, oh God. You know our hearts, you know our motives, oh God, our attitude towards you and towards your work. My God, we pray that this day you wash us by the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray that you cleanse us because of the blood of Jesus. Braso tareba askondere bakiso rabataya rabakasu ahinda rabakuwa. The Lord can read our mails. You know our thoughts. Reba koska tereba inda katuwa the complaints. Braso ka reba kasu ahinda raba the negative attitude. Reba katuwa the unwillingness to serve, even though He died and saved us. Reba katu reba ando skande reba shukatuwa. We've been bought with a price. My God, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our attitude towards the God of the heavens, the living God, the one who cares for us, the one who heals us, the one who protects, the one who guides us. Father, wash us. My God, cleanse us. Braso Katuria, Rebacata man did not see, but you saw us. Rebacota Skendereba, our willingness. Rebacotone Reba Suahinda to give our all to you and to serve you with meekness. Rebacoturiba and the Kasuriba in the Rebo Sua. Right, God, we plead the blood, we plead the blood. My God, with a repentant heart, we say we've come. My God, from today, we serve with our might. We serve with our will, our We submit our lives and everything to you, O God. We will serve you, O God, by serving your people. Rebakatua not half a deadlier, Rebakatua hinder but with our hands with our minds and with our strength with the desires of our hearts to promote your kingdom to make your name a praise on the earth for I give us that grace my God we will do it our father in the name of Jesus give us that ability oh God to magnify the ministries that you've given unto us we will usher with our minds with music we will play even as David played and honored you with leading the worship we will do it we will seek your face with nursery we will do it with PPA we will do it with intercessory we will pray with our might it is not unto a man but unto God the God the greater young the creator of the heavens and the earth reba katude basaya turi bakatanda reba katude bakatula basua reba katua hindere basure bakaya reba katua my god you saved us to please you reba sure basia handa handa kura basho katua somebody and katua lay everything before the altar and say to the lord i'm yours reba saka turi bakataya reba katua has kataraba man go we remember the times uh, when the enemy had wanted to destroy us uh, at times when we were struck with sicknesses and diseases uh, but it was by your mercy my God uh, you caused us to live and therefore let the life that we live uh, be glorified in your name uh, my 
Rebasoka, Father, we serve men. Roka Boskandere Basua, but we refuse to serve you. But today we've repented, oh God. From today, my God, we will work and we will live as children of the living God. Rebesute Rebasia, Rebasika Turi Bakata, Rebaka, somebody ask for grace, ask for grace. Rebaka, to will not be any how. Brekotaya Skandere Bosatoria, it will not be any how. Brokataya, Rebaka, to it's not when uh, we have the time, but we will do it. Uh, you will be number one in our lives. Rebaka tula basheke taleba rokota yanda kula basuwa hankatua. We will give of our talents. Uh, we will give of our substance. Rebasoka tuli basekandaya brando kabro wa hakasuwa hakata. Rebaka tuwa hakasula basuwa. Reka tula basuwa hakatua. Are we not children of the living God? Uh, did He not call us for a purpose? Uh, and kula but did did not save us for a purpose. Rebakos Katarabasua, we know our purpose, oh God. My God, we've seen the purpose of which you called us. Badori Akataya. Brandori akasunde reba kitsu ndara bakaya reba sude maseka ruwa hakataya broka tula basuka tika boka tua my God you are asking where your honor is from today we will honor you broka tula we will love you broka tula basoka turi bakata we will not serve in fear but we serve in love broka turi bakeso tari yataria broka boska tere basuri baha mandeka tula basude bashete reba broka tari andara bas Suwa hakata roka bot kaskede de basude baha for show us how to do it. We are well and abroka taya reba katula basuwa hinda katua reba katua with springs. My God, bro, in the katule bakata rua reba tula basunde reba kida basunde ya reba noria tabunda hinda anda kunda manda kuri bakola basuwa anda katua. We will walk to your house reba katua hinda reba kuwa. We will enter your gates with thanksgiving and hearts and. And into your cause we praise uh, and we will take the mantle that we will serve as never before uh, so that your glory and your name will be a praise on the earth uh, father we have come uh, and this is the hour because this is the year of release we give you glory and praise in jesus name hallelujah the last scripture i want to share with you is this john 12, 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So in 2023, you want God to honor you. So give him loving service. Serve him. And the Father will honor you. It's so important. I encourage you to serve the Lord. Someone has said, service is not a duty or a job, but a way of life. You don't have to be a pastor. You can even be an entrepreneur, earn money and help your church. We can serve. See, when we talk about serving, not just being the pulpit, but doing everything that the church needs to do, being part of it or supporting it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My Rose has prayed, received a benediction. In 2023, the year of release, from the hand of your enemies and from all who hate you. May that release cause you to serve God like as never before. And may God honor you, promote you, increase you, and make 2023 the best year of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for serving.